five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. This is About Space. America's return to space with news and information on our U.S. space program is your host of About Space, David Denault. Welcome, and thanks for joining me today. If you listened to our program last week, many in the scientific community say the Big Bang never really happened. And today, atheists, protagonists, and evolutionists are left without the answer being God created the universe. God was just, uh, God is outside of time, space, matter. I think you need to stop and look at the theory that you uh, are believing in, apparently, because there are so many thousands of unanswered questions. See, it's much easier for me to believe in the beginning God than to believe, believe in the beginning dirt or matter. If the Big Bang Theory is true, then I would like to know what exploded and where did it come from and where did the energy come from and where did the space come from for the matter to expand into and where did the organization come from and where did the information come from? There's a whole host of questions that are a whole lot harder for you to answer than in the beginning God. That was Dr. Kent Hovind and we'll hear more from Dr. Hovind next as America and the world is listening to About Space Today. We could fly to such great heights Oh, oh, the places, oh, the places we'll go Oh, the places, oh, the places this world has to show So let's get lost in the great unknown Oh, oh, MSC Cruises, a world of discovery Ever dream of an island getaway at an all-inclusive resort or going on an island hopping cruise to multiple island destinations? See sunbleached beaches and swim in the azure waters of the Caribbean Sea. Call today for your special discount prices to your island getaway. This is a special offer for About Space by calling 877-747-8631 and let's go and explore the islands of the Caribbean. Welcome back. So, in the days and weeks from now, what can the evolutionists conclude? Well, Dr. Kent Hovind carefully outlines why creation is the only answer. All right. Well, it's an honor to be here tonight. My name is Kent Hovind. I live in Pensacola, Florida. I taught high school science for 15 years. The Earth was originally created where people lived to be 900 years old. I predict we will find lots of uh, legends about a golden age and a creation event. This seems to be kind of universal throughout history. Most people believe there was a creation, and most people believe there was a time when man used to live to, near, to be nearly a thousand. The Greeks talked about it, the Babylonians talked about it, the Sumerians. Everybody talked about this golden age. Why? Well, that's predicted based on the creation viewpoint, okay? What difference does it make if you believe in evolution or creation? Well, if evolution is true, how do we tell right from wrong? If evolution is true, how does anybody tell right from wrong? If I wanted you to make a list of ten things that are wrong, before you put anything on the list, I want to know how are you deciding? Do we decide right from wrong based on what Congress thinks? Do we decide right from wrong based on the majority? How do we decide right from wrong? Simple question, I've never had it answered. If evolution is true, death brought man into the world, and death is actually the hero of the plot. Because if evolution is true, one animal evolves a little better than the rest, for some reason, maybe a mutation or something. What, ha what must happen to the rest of them? They have to die. Otherwise, the good genes are diluted back into the population and lost. Evolution is a religion of death. Death is actually the hero of the plot. If the Bible is true, then man brought death into the world. If evolution is true, death brought man into the world. These two views cannot possibly be more opposite. Somebody is wrong. The word evolution has six different meanings. First of all, there would have to be cosmic evolution. That would be the origin of time, space, matter. They try to answer that with the Big Bang Theory, with which there are numerous problems. The second meaning or level or stage of the evolution theory would have to be chemical evolution. If the Big Bang produced hydrogen, well then how did we get all these other elements? They want me to believe that uranium evolved from hydrogen? They'll say, oh yeah, you get fusion in stars. Well, first place, you can't fuse past iron, number one. And secondly, if you want the stars to produce the elements, you have a chicken and an egg problem here. 
Which came first, the elements to make the stars or the stars to make the elements? You have a real problem here, but they never talk about chemical evolution. I'd like to hear that answer tonight. Thirdly, we'd have to have stellar evolution. The stars would have to evolve. Nobody's ever proven the formation of any one star. We see a few, st few spots getting brighter and they're assuming a star is forming. No, it could be the dust is clearing. It could be a supernova taking place. There's, there's all kinds of explanations. Nobody's ever proven a star can form. And yet it's known now that there are about 11 trillion stars per person f f on this planet. Each of you can own 11 trillion of them. How did the stars evolve? Fourthly, we have to have organic evolution, the origin of life. How did life get started? Fifthly is macroevolution, where an animal changes to a different kind of animal. Nobody's ever seen any of these first five. Lastly is what's called microevolution. I object to the term, but they use it, so I'll use it. Microevolution tells us there are varieties within the same kind. Big dogs, little dogs, okay. This one happens, the first five are purely religious. And if you want to believe in those first five, you enjoy yourself, but don't call it science. And don't make me pay to teach that to the next generation of kids as part of science, because it's not. It's nothing but a religion. They teach 20 billion years ago, Big Bang, and you know, that's what, that's what the evolution theory is based on. You have to have an origin point. 18 or 20 billion years ago, there was a Big Bang. I think the evolution theory, as is currently taught in our textbooks, is totally unscientific. There is no shred, not a shred of evidence to back it up, and I simply resent paying for it. So my position is that the evolution theory, which teaches clearly 20 billion years ago, Big Bang, then it says millions of years of torrential rains created the oceans as the earth cooled down, you know, cooled down into a rocky crust, and then oceans formed over millions of years. This textbook says, swirling in the waters of the oceans is a bubbling broth of complex chemicals. Progress from a complex chemical soup to a living organism is very slow. It sure is. It don't even happen. That's how slow it is. This guy said the first self-replicating systems must have emerged in this organic soup. So according to the evolution theory, 20 billion years ago, Big Bang, 4.6 billion years ago, the Earth cooled down. It rained on the rocks for millions of years and turned them into soup, and the soup came alive 3 billion years ago. So great, 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 great grandpa was soup. Okay? Now, it's true there's a lot of dogs in the world, but they didn't come from a rock 3.4 billion years ago, whatever you want to say. Here's the major difference, major difference, that I don't think you're going to understand. I admit mine is a religion. They do not admit theirs is a religion. They want you to think what they believe is science and all of you should pay for their religion. The evolution is a dying religion surviving only on tax dollars. Evolution theory is positively anti-science. There's not a shred of real evidence to support any of the theories except oft repeating lies. Let's define one more term in my last 30 seconds. Stupid. Lacking normal intelligence, foolish, silly, a stupid idea, dull and boring. Evolution is not even a good theory. I think it is stupid. Thank you. Dr. Kent Hoven. Perhaps our discussions of the last two programs have provided you with a new insight on creation and evolution. And your thoughts are always welcomed. Be sure to check out our Facebook page at aboutspace.today for launches and landings. And invite your family and friends to listen weekly. And don't forget to join Don Meyer Space Coast News Editor this Friday for America in Space. And to all our listeners around the globe and here in the U.S., thanks for joining me. I'm David Denault, and this has been About Space Today.